So this is the very first mini PC that I get to try out, and I was super impressed. When I received this unit, I was not expecting it to pack such a strong CPU, as it's just so tiny. However, this thing came with quite a few surprises up its sleeve, and there was a lot to compliment it on. Today, we're going to see if the Ace Magic AD08 Pro can do PC gaming right. So let's go ahead and dive right in. The exterior design consists of a very tiny tower that is about 8 inches tall maybe, <laughs> not the exact measurements, which is a great size for just keeping it around your desk. At first it does resemble a gaming PC, but once you power it on, the RGB lights start to go off everywhere and it really starts to look like a gaming machine. Something special that you're going to get with this one is a fan speed toggle right on the power button, so you can actually switch between silent mode, auto, and performance mode. Frankly, I find all of these modes to be pretty quiet regardless, so I would just keep it at performance mode anyway, just to get the most out of this machine. Now on the front, you're going to get two USB-A ports, a USB-C port, and a headphone jack. On the back, you're going to get a two USB-A ports, two HDMI ports, an Ethernet port, and an AC entry. The I.O. is definitely plentiful and it will go a long way to making this a very versatile machine. Overall, I really like the construction, the aesthetic, and the offerings that we get from the AD08 machine. In terms of specs, we're looking at an unexpectedly powerful machine. This machine features an Intel Core i9-11900H CPU, which is an 8-core 16-thread CPU running on Intel UHD graphics with a max dynamic frequency of 1.45 GHz. So this is running on integrated graphics and not dedicated, which will affect performance drastically. Usually we want to see dedicated graphics instead, but that would force the price of this machine to skyrocket. You also get 16GB of RAM, 512GB of SSD storage, and the like. This this all comes at a price of $839, though as of the recording of this video, it appears to be on sale for $671. When it comes to the software, you've got a pretty standard Windows 11 experience. No ARM software to be worried about, but full Windows 11, so you can expect to play a lot of your games on here. However, there appear to be compatibility issues regarding some software, especially a lot of emulators. We actually have Dolphin, PCSX3, PCSX2, and more emulators that just have not been compatible at all. Constant issues with missing DLL files, so unfortunately I can't say that this would be a great emulation machine, as it just appeared to have compatibility issues with a lot of emulators. However, when it comes to Steam games, we have had no issues whatsoever. And when it comes to set performance in PC gaming, we do have a lot to look at. So we do have a very powerful CPU that would or that should be very good for gaming. However, I will say this now, that the lack of dedicated graphics does hold this machine back from reaching its full potential. Some really high-end games will struggle to run, and we will look at at least one game that's like that, but so many other games run so well with the integrated graphics as is. So let's go ahead and talk about these games individually. Now let's begin with something very simple that will have no issues running on this machine at all that we already know of, Final Fantasy VI. This game obviously runs really well at 1080p, and there are absolutely no issues with a pixel art game like this, and even with a turn-based game. It should go without saying that a game like this will run really well regardless of the circumstances. A game like this will run very well, and this will extend to even action titles that are pixel art based. You guys will see that with other games, actually, or really just another game that we are going to test right about now. Death Gambit also runs really well at 1080p, at the full frame rate without any slowdowns whatsoever. Games like this will run really well on a lot of different devices, so I mostly just wanted to show off what this would still look like on a higher-end machine. Everything is very smooth here, and I'm happy to report on these for sure. Overall, it's pretty good, and you will enjoy your time with this game for sure if you wanted to get a machine like this for your own setup, even though it does run on integrated graphics. However, we're going to see that that's going to become more challenging as we move forward. Next is a very different game, Dark Souls Remastered. This game required that I ran it at 720p, mostly medium settings, and I do get a little over 30 FPS on average, but the game does look pretty good, and I am genuinely impressed with how the remaster looks. On the Switch, it doesn't look nearly as good, and even with the lower settings, the game looks quite good, but the game does require a lot of compromises to run, even if it's not really enough to really ruin the experience. You can still have a very solid experience playing the game with the system. 
so awesome work there. Bayonetta was another game that just ran quite well and actually better than Dark Souls Remastered, understandably. I like how smooth everything appears as it runs at roughly 40 FPS at medium settings at 720p. You can probably still play this game at 1080p, but I don't really recommend it. It looks fine for what it is, and it does still run quite well as well, so I don't really have many complaints as I think that the integrated graphics are doing a decent job at processing things here. So I think that it's pretty safe to say that PlayStation 3 era of games will run pretty well natively for the most part, and we're going to see that for the most part aspect come up actually with the following game, because that just won't apply to every single game. Final Fantasy XIII 2 suffered from a lot of optimization issues, I would say, because even though the game looked fine, it ran poorly. At 1080p, it would crash while in the middle of battle, but at 720p, it might as well still crash because it just enters this frozen state and it never leaves. So not all PlayStation 3 era games will run that well on this machine, unfortunately. Do keep that in mind. This is one of those games that will either require a lot of work on your end to get it to work consistently, or you'll just need an external GPU for this machine. Not really worth it if you want to play this game, or a lot of games like it I want to say, even though this game just isn't that well optimized I think. Final Fantasy XV on the other hand is actually consistent in its performance. It consistently runs at slightly under 30 FPS, which is obviously not good, and you can start to see the limitations of the CPU without a dedicated GPU. I'm running this game at 720p, 75% of the total resolution, everything either turned off or at the lowest setting possible, and while it is playable, it does not really look very good at all. So I wouldn't recommend a system like this for a game that is just this demanding. But that's not really the fault of the system, and just an issue with the specs not being sufficient for this. The CPU is great, but the GPU is still missing, and that is just how things are here. It's cause of the performance lacking but it is very difficult to fit a physical GPU inside of a system this small. So again, I do understand. Lastly, I went ahead and tested out Baldur's Gate 3, which is a game I've been playing a lot recently. And this just made me realize how demanding this game is. <laughs> this game does run, but it looks like RuneScape back in the day at 720p, medium to low settings and like. The game is playable, but it doesn't look too good. However, if you wanted to play Baldur's Gate on your PC, then you can still do it. However, you would be compromising very heavily if you're doing that even with such a powerful CPU. It looks like this game is just very GPU demanding, so really just keep that in mind that there are definitely going to be limitations with this system even though it can still accomplish quite a bit. Now, this machine should also be more than enough for most prosumer content creators. It should be able to edit 4K footage just fine, even if the rendering is slower because it's CPU based, so if you wanted to decent editing machine as well to be able to game at times that you would be working, then this would be a very capable machine. However, streamers will struggle to both game and stream at the same time because of the lack of a dedicated GPU. All of the tasks are placed on the CPU itself, which can still be a lot to handle if you want to play smoothly while streaming your content, or at least for your viewers to have a proper viewing experience. So do keep things in mind, because this should make for a decent editing machine for sure, even if you do 2D animations and even 3D work to some degree. But for streaming, there just isn't really enough room to work with here, and many will struggle to game and stream at the same time from this machine. Unless you're streaming from an external device like a PlayStation 5 that's doing all of the heavy lifting for gaming, for example, then that's just an exception. But most people are probably just going to be running on this machine by itself. So in conclusion, this is a very interesting device, and for a tiny piece PC, it can definitely accomplish a lot. There are some great things about it, including the design, the I.O., the fact that it can still run some PC games fairly well is great. However, emulation will be difficult with this device from what I've experienced. Also, with this machine, you do have to keep your expectations in check. The fact that there is a missing GPU does stifle the performance or the potential of this machine, and hopefully this video helps you understand the differences here on what you would be missing. However, you can still do a lot with this machine as it is. It's like an Ultrabook. Almost, but arguably better because of the beefier processor that you won't find anywhere else pretty much when it comes to uh, notebooks. So yes, I definitely think that this is worth considering because it is about right for what you should expect for the money. However, I understand that getting a gaming laptop for some just makes more sense. Buy this at the sale price while it lasts because that's when it's at its best. With that said, I can recommend it as long as you know what you're getting. So thank you so much for watching this video all the way up until the very end because it is always appreciated. Now please make sure to have a look 
uh, down below at my affiliate links because if you do use my affiliate links then you will be helping out the channel quite a bit as usual so that's always helpful and being able to help us get more review units like this so links down below again please make sure to use those and i also do have a tiktok where you can go ahead and follow me i like to post short versions of these reviews essentially so please make sure to follow me over there because i am trying to get a following there as well now with that said this has been francisco from tech summit thank you for watching and until next time have a good one enjoy